that idea about losing it is, is curious, at least for me. I think a lot of us have good intentions, and we mean well, and maybe we've even looked at the rules, mm -hmm. but in the heat of the moment, on the road, I'm mm -hmm. sure this happens all the time, mm -hmm. it all <laughs> goes out the window. And maybe, <laughs> I don't know if in your getting together these programs, you've come up with any tips that we could use in that heat of the moment that will make we us feel better. We have a gift better. for each of you. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. We have a bumper sticker, removable. If you see Choose me on the road with this, please in be Montgomery nice. County, please drive gently. Donated by our good friends at AAA. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's easy for AAA to be involved in this because when we do our polls, the number one uh, threat to uh, to people on the highways, as they report, is aggressive, reckless driving, and that simply is just the loss of civility we're seeing in society translated into behavior behind the wheel. And we see over 50% of crashes are caused by those behaviors, speeding, tailgating, passing illegally, um, that are really um, associated with aggressive, reckless driving. Think of the crashes, the injuries, the deaths that we could save if we could get people to behave civilly when they're behind the wheel and you know uh, it's kind of uh, kind of interesting you know uh, I, I've talked in a couple of churches and you talk about you know um, respect one another and how that's a but you know you kind of want to say gee when they talk about respect one another could they possibly mean that idiot behind <laughs> the, the, the wheel next to me no 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 and somehow that's exempt I can be angry do as mean, I say not know. as I do you exactly. were saying early just a little while ago Lon you were talking about the fact that you had done a survey of, of people and and 40 percent acknowledged that they had done in the last year driving. we said have, you know being honest have you in the last year uh, been an aggressive driver mm -hmm. uh, and 40 percent said oh yeah I, I have and this is meanwhile while uh, double that number said it was the number one threat to their highway safety so you think like, yeah That's amazing. aggressive reckless driving really mm -hmm. threatens my safety on the highways but yeah I've lost it on the highway and 15 percent admitted that they had used digital hand signs with other drivers so <laughs> digital hand signs very well and put in a civil fashion there a lot of us in AAA. an interesting thing there was a similar study done in england and um, they found and, and i always think because the english have such great accents they couldn't possibly be less civilized on the highway <laughs> However, but they reported a high instance of rude digital gesticulations <laughs> oh. Esther, we, we had talked at the, at the beginning of the show in referencing this topic that a lot of it may be a, uh, attached to the fact that it is such a fast-paced society. Uh, we talked about mm -hmm. uh, people saying, well, I don't like to see somebody walking in on a cell, cell phone, but uh, is there any way, in your view, to put the, the genie back in the bottle, or how do we just deal with oh, this? Wow. This is the society we're in today. I think it's increased acts of awareness, just being more aware. I, I'm, I wouldn't say don't use your cell phone. Don't use it in restaurants. That's rude. Uh, pay attention. People sometimes use it in public settings if they're, uh, uh, you know, on metro or something like that. Or when they're, they're this is my, my little pet peeve. I guess we're all going to have one today. But yes, go ahead. When <laughs> they're talking to a salesperson, maybe they're ringing up their order and they stay on the phone the whole time. They never say please or thank you or yes. thank you. Oh, so yeah. there, I mean, just, <laughs> it's not saying don't ever use your cell phone. We're cell phone dependent of society. Be aware, you know, just. You know, even if somebody gets a phone call while they're checking out, at least to say thank you very much to the person that's taken the time to wait on them. Absolutely. Lon, I, I am curious to know because I know um, on this one specific area that is really uh, an example we keep pointing back to. You've had a major, you've been involved in a major campaign. Um, and I think people want to know, um, is there is there any progress being made on the issue of road rage? So many dangerous mm -hmm. accidents. Uh, fatalities where people have seen the, the ramifications. Mm -hmm. Is there any change in that, that we can report to? I know you're surveying, but what's the f what, it, what are the hopes for the future? Well, there? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, we have a major program going, Smooth Operator Program, uh, and all the police are participating in it, and it's high visibility enforcement to go after road rage, aggressive, reckless driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, it certainly yields huge numbers. If, if mm -hmm. the question is, um, do a lot of tickets deter and does, does television coverage help? Uh, then by that measure, we're getting there. But, you know, it's tough being in traffic safety because you have to step back and say, how did we do last year as a society? And 
Last year, we lost 43,000 lives, 2.8 million injuries and crashes. And a lot of this is really behavioral. It's not because cars are mechanically deficient and are failing. It's because drivers, in so many instances, are disrespecting other drivers. They're, they've got to get somewhere, so they're going fast. Never mind that when you go fast, not only you're threatening yourself, but you're also sending a message about your lack of respect to everyone else on the road because you're putting them at danger. Uh, and so I think that we've got to realize that it's a tough nut to crack because it starts with each and every one of us controlling our behavior behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. Are we making progress? Is there more awareness of the threat of aggressive reckless driving today because of the high uh, visibility enforcement? I think so. Has that meant that our roads are safer or that we lost any fewer lives last year? No, unfortunately, our, our dead count on the highways uh, across America was up. This is really something that impacts all of our society sectors. And I just want to talk a little bit about that because I think a lot of people think it's young people who are less civil mm -hmm. or less polite. But this is something we're really trying to go, or the campaign is really for throughout the county. That's correct. All ages, all backgrounds, all races, all religions, everybody can be more aware of being civil. Mm -hmm. And Esther, talk yeah. a little bit more, I'm, I'm sorry, about uh, the uh, the effort to get involved. What should somebody do mm -hmm. if they want to be a part of Choose Civility if in Montgomery County? they want to be part of Choose Civility, the businesses or organizations or nonprofits that want to be a partner, they can go to the website, ChooseCivilityMC.org. They can also go to the Leadership Montgomery website and contact, contact us, LeadershipMontgomeryMD.org, and there's a place on there to send an email that says, I'd like to be a partner. Again, free just making a commitment to doing something and we share we have handouts that we share with people we, we try and make it as easy as possible for people to to participate and the we're working with Montgomery County Libraries we want to start putting out bookmarks uh, we want to look for other ways to get the word out mm -hmm. the this Dr. Forney's civility book is available at bookstores and also in the Montgomery County Libraries mm -hmm. choose civility by Dr. P.M. Forney. We had him kick off our initiative in September. It was originally convened as a year-long initiative, and the partner said, let's not end it at the mm -hmm. end of a year. We still have a need for civility, so <laughs> we'll keep going. Okay. That's fine. Lon, as I'm long sorry as I cut you up. We oh, have no, a few seconds left right. in this segment, but I want to give you a chance to get that point well, across. You had, had mentioned kids, and I worry about kids, frankly. You know, my wife and I walk most every morning through our neighborhood, and the people our age, when we're walking and we pass them, they say, hi, how are you? The kids so often have iPods and they're looking mm -hmm. down, they're not, they're disengaged, they're not making contact. And that worries me a great deal. They have so many opportunities to tune out electronically. And you know, and plus they've gotten a very poor example from our generation, I think. We <laughs> haven't been, you know, we I haven't been I was gonna say, I don't know, in my gym it's not, it's not any one, one age, right? That's just, it's, 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 a, it's a focused thing and some yep. people are just tuning out from others. Mm -hmm. This has been a great uh, conversation. Esther Newman, Lon Anderson, thanks so much for being with Thank us. Thank you. We're going to take a short break and when we return we will discuss rules of civility by George Washington standards. Stay tuned. You're watching Campus Conversations. Mm -hmm.